no one else has them. Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call the Langley City um, April 12, 2021 regular council meeting to order and begin it by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Kate C. Kwantlen, Masqui, and Semiamu First Nations. And for any of the members of the public who are in attendance to watch these proceedings, welcome. And just a reminder to keep your mics and your camera turned off while you're in attendance. And I just want to take a moment to send our condolences to um, her, her Royal Majesty Queen Elizabeth and the Royal family for the passing of Prince Philip and um, you know, seven day, decades of serving the public and uh, over 20,000 engagements over seven, seven decades is uh, a big accomplishment. So um, he'll be deeply missed. And, um, but I thought we should send fair condolences on behalf of council. So let's move on to the adoption of the April 12, 2021 regular meeting that the April 12, 2021 agenda be adopted as circulated. Any changes or additions? There's Councillor Sturgeon. Welcome. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't do introductions and nobody said anything. <laughs> All right, well, I'm Mayor Val Vandenbroek, and with me today, I'm going to get my little piece of paper because um, we have Councillor Albrecht, Councillor Pahal, sorry, I'm just going by the video screen now, Councillor Terry James, Councillor Gail Martin, Councillor Rosemary Wallace, and Councillor Rudy Storyboom. One second. I was in another meeting all by myself for a while. Oh, sorry. Did you go to the other link? I did. Well, you're here now and that's all that matters and we haven't really started yet. So welcome. Okay. So with us also today, we have Francis Chung, our Chief Administrative Officer, Darren Light, our Director of Corporate Services, uh, Carl Johansson, our Director of Development Services, Rick Baumhoff, our Director of Engineering Parts and Environment, Kim Hilton, our Director of Recreation, Culture, and Community Services, and Kelly Kenny, our Corporate Officer. Sorry about that. I don't know why I forgot that. Maybe it's the sunshine today. All right. So was there any changes or additions to the agenda? Seeing none, motion is that the April 12, 2021 agenda be adopted as circulated. All those in favor? And that carries. Thank you. And adoption of the regular meeting minutes from March 22nd, 2021, that the minutes of the regular meeting held on March 29th, 2021 be adopted as circulated. Any corrections on that, folks? Okay, I need a mover and a seconder for that as well, please. Uh, Councillor Wallace, Councillor Stortaboom, all those in favor, and that carries. Right on to the special pre closed meeting minutes from March 29th, 2021. That the minutes of the special pre closed meeting held on March 29th, 2021 be adopted as circulated. We're in a seconder. Councillor James, Councillor Sturdeboom, any corrections to that? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? And that carries. All right, and up next we have delegations and we have a request to amend the business license bylaw to allow for food trucks. And with us this afternoon, we have Shira Stewart, the Director of Government Relations from Gateway Casinos, Cascades Casino Langley. So welcome Shira. Hello everybody, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Rudy gave me a thumbs up, so that's a yes. Um, good afternoon, Mayor and Council. It's very nice to see everybody, um, even though virtually. I certainly miss seeing many of you in our location, and I'm really hoping and crossing my fingers that that comes back. Um, thank you, Mayor Val, for the introduction in regards to the amending the food truck. Before I get to that point, I know I only have a short amount of time, so I'll be very fast. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't just briefly mention uh, sort of where we are right now. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but we have been mandated closed since March 16th of 2020. So basically in another couple of days, it will be 13 months um, that the casino industry in BC has been in a mandated shutdown. Um, I'm sure you can understand what that means for all of our employees and everybody across the province. 
for Langley specifically, what that means is pre-COVID, we had about 571 employees working in Langley full-time. And right now we have somewhere around 70. Um, and that includes the restaurants that are open. So big dip in numbers. Those numbers will not go up again until such time as we are able to open all of our doors, which includes the hotel, the convention center, and the casino. Um, I also want to just remind this Mayor and Council, um, because I saw many of you there that pre-COVID we had spent almost $18 million um, on uh, our new Atlas restaurant, on expanding the patio at Match, on the convention center and the hotel, and we continue to hope and believe that we will be a great contributor to the city of Langley, which has been a great friend to us. Um, and I hope that I can see many of you more at different events throughout uh, the months and years to come. And fingers crossed that this vaccine rollout uh, goes quick and we can get back to some semblance of normalcy. So thank you for bearing with me for that brief little interlude. Um, so moving to the point at hand, so thank you again, is what we're looking to do is amend the current bylaw that's in place for the city of Langley that relates to the food truck. I did want to start by saying that I recognize why you guys have this bylaw. The last thing you want to have is Bob's Burgers, or is that even a place? I'm not sure I'm making it up, or, or Tony's Tomatoes or whatever, who are residing in Squamish or Vancouver and bring their food truck down and take over from the restaurants that currently reside in, in downtown Langley. Because I know that obviously the residents and the businesses in downtown Langley need to thrive. So the reason for this amendment is specifically to ask for an amendment so that restaurants and businesses that already have bricks and mortar properties like our match restaurant that already have a location in Langley have the ability to add a food truck to their current establishment. So uh, we're not asking for you to remove the bylaw, we're asking for an amendment. Um, one of the reasons that we're doing this is really, especially in light of what's happening right now, that everybody is being forced to be outside. And this is going to be there for a while, even when the um, when the when the rules are, are, are lifted and the PHO orders come down, I think that it's safe to say that outside is safer than inside. And having this food truck as a part of Match Langley will able us to hire a few more people back. Will also able us to promote the restaurant, which I know all of you guys have been at. It will be parked in our parking lot, and it hopefully will draw people from other parts of Langley and even the other areas surrounding, whether it is the township of Langley or Surrey or other places like that to come into the city of Langley. So that's really what we're asking for, um, for here. When things are allowed to be open again, we would use the food truck to come and support the city of Langley in everything from different events, uh, fairs that you guys have, anything that the city needs us to do, we can park our food truck there. And obviously it'll be a truncated menu, but we're really thinking that adding this to our current match restaurant would be really beneficial to the city um, and beneficial to the residents within Langley. So that is my spiel. Um, and uh, thank you for taking the time to listen. Great, thank you, Ms. Stewart. Um, does anybody have any questions? Councillor Stortebrim. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And thank you, Sherry. I really appreciate your update and your presentation, your request. I admire the entrepreneurial spirits being demonstrated, even though the business has just been whacked. So yeah. <laughs> Condolences for all that frustration that you're experiencing. I look forward to a grand reopening and all that's with it. I also appreciate your specific request for your specific property. And uh, I'd like to suggest that, uh, you know, we'll talk with staff about it and moving forward. Um, I, I feel, you know, very favorable about this. So thank you again for your presentation. And uh, we'll look forward to doing business in the future very soon. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor um, Martin. Yes, thanks, Sierra, uh, for your presentation. Um, I actually think it's it's a good idea. So just to be clear, this would only be restaurants that are located within the city of Langley now and perhaps operate a food truck. Correct. If, am I allowed to answer? Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Um, yes. Yeah, so. You know, obviously we can't ask for something specific to match. So what we were thinking that, and, and I fully appreciate and support why you don't want random food trucks in there. So this would be an amendment to help businesses that currently are bricks and mortar residing in Langley, who have a space already in Langley, and it's an addition. It's basically, if you can think of it almost like a patio addition on wheels, 
to something right. that already is in Langley. That's what right. we're looking for. Okay, so would, would you be setting up tables and stuff like that for people to enjoy their meals or just sort of a takeaway kind of a thing? That is a great question. Um, we actually just talked about this the other day. So what we're hoping to do is to actually take the food truck to places where people are, whether it's a park that already has benches, Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So not not on your parking lot. Not in your parking lot. No. No. We're, okay. So we're not we're not looking to create another restaurant where we park it and then put out tables and chairs because we right. already have a patio. This is more of an addition. We'll drive it around um, and we will go to hot spots. Actually, that's not the right word because hot spots is a bad connotation right now. We will go to locations where people are in a park or where people are, are residing or maybe outside of a workplace uh, where people can come out and instead of eating indoors, they can come out, they can use our food truck. That's kind of what we're looking for. So not an additional restaurant. Okay. Well, I, I think uh, probably the best thing is, is to, to send this back to staff and get some kind of report from them. But I think it's a great idea. It certainly would help the restaurants uh, within the city now that are able to, to do this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Albrecht. Uh, thank you. And, and um, it's good to see you again, uh, Ms. Stewart. And, and uh, I'm glad <laughs> yeah. you've uh, brought this creative idea forward for us to uh, investigate a little bit further. And uh, I like the idea of it. And, uh, but there's also some logistics that I'm sure that uh, staff will be uh, top of mind with. Uh, uh, such as uh, washrooms and uh, uh, garbage and litter and um, recycling and those types of things. So uh, I'm looking forward to um, a conversation or further conversation on this and hearing what uh, staff have to say. But uh, thank you for bringing this idea forward. I think it's a, a great idea and we have to be creative at these times. And uh, I think it's important for us as a council to uh, have some uh, latitude and understanding and uh, some flexibility in how uh, we allow businesses to continue to uh, to meet the bottom line as difficult as it is at these times. So thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor James. Thank you. I wasn't expecting I was next. Um, thanks, Shira. That's a really outside of the box thinking sort of an idea. I do have a couple of uh, comments. I don't know if there's a lot of restaurants that will be able to afford this. So I appreciate, sorry, appreciate the initiative um, that some will be in a position to. I think the only uh, restaurant that we have right now that has an existing and operating food truck is Sea Lovers. So it would be interesting to see who takes advantage of that. But I do know that we've been talking about this for a while on and off. And I think I'm in agreement with uh, my council colleagues in that this is an interesting avenue to explore. I would like to turn this back to staff. Things like um, Councillor Albrecht mentioned, but there's permits and insurance and where this will be allowed. And so there's a lot more to it, um, which I'm sure you guys have thought about for sure um, in preparation of coming here tonight. But I do like the course uh, of thinking and I do think it's worth exploring. So I just wanted to thank you for, yeah, taking the time and coming forward and bringing this to our attention so we can actually put it right in front of us and look at it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Councillor Pahal. I think, I think I'm next, maybe. Oh, you can go, uh, uh, Sorry. Councillor Wallace. No, I called you, Nathan. Go ahead. Okay, cool. Councillor Pahal. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to put a motion forward, I guess, and I'll see if they get a seconder on this. Uh, that staff investigate and report back to council on updating our business licensing to permit food trucks, uh, including in the report, uh, fixed business location, recycling, garbage, sanitation, and location. I'll second that. And if, if I may speak uh, to it, I do think it's a great idea. I know in our proposed OCP update, we talk about in the Nickel Methyl River District plan, we talk about food trucks being at trailheads. So I think this all fits perfectly. Thank you. And I can third the motion if you need a third. No? Okay. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Councillor Wallace. Thank you. And I apologize. I didn't see Nathan's uh, hand up. So excuse me for That's that. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you for bringing this forward and uh, for your motion. Um, 
Councillor Hall, um, speaking on behalf of the um, environmental task group, a thing that comes to mind is the environmental impact, so the uh, sustainability piece. Um, and I think it's something that in, I mean, this is a great innovation and a great way to help businesses, but I think it's also a great time to, um, you know, work together with the city in best sustainable practices when it comes to, um, you know, products and, and, and waste management. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? I think it's a great initiative, Ms. Stewart, and uh, it's great that you guys are being fluid with this because it's uh, absolutely necessary in this time of COVID, so. Okay, thank you. anything else to add or? No, I just, I, I, want, to, I want to just appreciate everybody's comments. I agree with everything you've said. Uh, Nathan, thank you for putting uh, the motion forward. Sorry, Councillor Pichelle, sorry, that was, shouldn't call you by your first name, my bad. Um, but it really is, I just feel like I know a lot of you guys, so sorry about that. Um, but I did just wanna thank you for your comments and I look forward to working with staff and addressing all the, the comments and questions. And uh, you know, I really appreciate you, you letting me think outside the box and I wish you guys all the best of luck and stay safe. Um, and I will sign off now. So thank you so much everybody for your time. Great, thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank you. Great to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> okay, so I will call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. So that will go forward to staff. And Ms. Kenny, did you need further clarification on that motion or was that satisfactory? Perhaps uh, Councillor Pahal could email me the actual wording. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Next regular council meeting is April 26, 2021. And the following after that will be May 2021. I can't believe we're going in, in May almost already. Okay, so up next, uh, Councillor Martin, you have library happenings. Can you see it? Yes, I can. Just let me pull it up. Sorry, I wasn't ready. Uh, I've got to find it now. Library presentation. Okay. So, um, the slide two. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Announcing, <clears throat> excuse me, Fraser Valley Regional Library sixth annual teen creativity contest. Show us your creative writing, display your artistic skills build a robot, write a song, loop a video. And the deadline to enter is May the 28th. The next slide, Big Library Read connects readers around the world with the same book at the same time. Borrow the art of taking it easy today through April 19th without any wait lists or holds. Enjoy all the contenders for Canada Reads, including the winning title, Johnny Appleseed, which is available on audiobook now with no holds and no waiting. April is Celebrate Diversity Month, and it also happens to be po Poetry Month. Read this diverse list of poetry written by authors from all walks of life. And you can enjoy a presentation by Dr. Arvind Ravindran, followed by experimental guided heartfelt techniques suitable for beginners looking to explore and incorporate these practices into their lives. Or you can watch a movie from our collection on DVD or on Canopy using your Fraser Valley Regional Library card and join us later for a discussion. It's a book club, but for movies. The movie is April the 19th. The movie for April 19th is Boyhood. And calling all bird enthusiasts of all ages. Sorry. Join us for a discussion about backyard birds. We'll feature a selection of books on birds for all ages. This program is fun for the whole flock. And you can find yourself looking longingly at trip photos on your phone, as I'm sure we've all done this past year. You can scratch that travel itch and share your past trips, what made it special and why others should go. Presenters and observers are welcome. Each month at Cookbook Club, we explore a culinary theme. In April, 
we'll dive into a discussion of soups. Please come prepared to share, share your favorite soup recipes, cookbooks, magazines, or websites with the group. And test your knowledge of a galaxy far, far away with our Star Wars trivia event. Participate solo or as a team with other rebels in your household. And that's the library report for today. Thank you. Oh, I like the May the 4th be with you event. That's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Bahal. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, to uh, Councillor Martin. Thanks for this report. It's always great hearing it. Uh, I also love the thing about the bird watching because at this time of year, my goodness, there are lots of birds around in our community. I actually ran into Councillor Wallace literally in the trail yesterday and it's just so full of nature and herons and birds I've never even seen before. So I'm, I'm really happy we have this program at our library, uh, Councillor Martin, thank you. Thank you. Um, it's not for public information yet, but there's another great program that will be announced uh, very soon and it's gonna be quite different. So you can stay tuned for that. Uh, Councillor Albrecht. Yeah, I just wanna thank you, uh, Councillor Martin for the report and if you could, I'm always impressed with um, the creative side of uh, the library staff and and the uh, the and the uh, workers there. So if you could pass along uh, my appreciation uh, to them for that uh, outside the box thinking and trying to come up with things for our residents during these times. I will do that. Thank you very much, Councillor Waller. Thank you. Um, to the mayor, to Councillor Martin. Um, I'm just interested, I don't know if, if you know this um, answer, but just as far as the teens and how creative can you be, will there, were, will there be a uh, virtual display of um, work or if that's something that you could take back that, you know? Which one are you talking about? The very first one that, sorry, I don't know where it is in the lineup of what you spoke about, but just the teens. Um, oh, the creativity contest? Yeah, the creativity contest. Just as I'm just wondering if the, you know, after that, the deadline, if there, it'd be something that the library will put up as a virtual exhibition or something. I can't confirm that, but I would guess that they would probably be doing that. Okay, thank you. Great. All right, well, thank you for that presentation. Up next, we have the engineering update with Rick Baumhofer, Director of Engineering Parks and Environment. Thank you very much. And I, let me see here. Need to get my camera. All right, thank you very much. This update for uh, Park Engineering Parks and Environment for April 2021. Um, there was some drainage repairs on the uh, 204th Street overpass. As you can well imagine, with the, when you have aerial pipes like this, it can be affected by the frost and uh, freeze thaw impacts. So that's uh, with some uh, leak issues there. So it takes a little more effort to get to those kind of pipes. Uh, we did also uh, sidewalk trip hazard removal as part of our annual program where uh, we receive calls for uh, requests for service from the public generally you know having uh, trip hazards we go out and assess them and this is one of the techniques um, it's a lower cost technique to resolve the trip hazard just grinding the asphalt and level or uh, concrete and leveling the uh, this uh, trip hazard out we also did uh, have been completing uh, downtown pressure washing view on Salt Lane. The also the crosswalk uh, rapid flashing beacon installation has been completed at 208 Street at 45A. It's now fully functional. And this is a before shot of the 208s are are kind of during a removal. Of the 208 Street pedestrian bridge. And this is a shot of it being put back in place and refurbished. We also removed the uh, the bollards. That was there's some bollards in the in the middle of the bridge that wasn't quite up to up to our current standards. So we just removed it and this makes it uh, fully wheelchair accessible. 
uh, this is a shot of some uh, sewer or water main service installation on uh, Industrial Avenue. It's part of our um, twin pipe removal. Years ago, uh, new pipes were put in, but it was must have been left for a future date to, um, to remove the old pipe, which is the AC water main. So this is a, a continuation of our completion of uh, a project that was done quite a few years ago to remove the old AC pipe. This is a shot of uh, sidewalk repairs on 205A Street. And this is a more costly kind of a repair where it's too, there's just too much damage to you know, do it any other way, except for just complete removal and replacement of a new sidewalk. Uh, this is a shot of C uh, City Park uh, spring uh, basketball season preparations. So you can see the infield has been uh, resurfaced with topsoil and reseeded, and the, the, the diamond itself is uh, being re resurfaced. This is part of the trails uh, just on the west side of the ball diamonds, refurbishment of the trails. And this is a shot at City Park <coughs> at the new shelters. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, just showing the landscaping just, uh, around the, the shelters. It's getting very close to being ready and just waiting for the grass to be to take root that we can then open it up for the public. This is a picture at Bryden Lagoon Maintenance, uh, just re resurfacing the gravel areas, the landing area at the uh, east, the southeast corner of the lagoon. And uh, it just creates a nice open area again for the public as well as ducks but make good use of that space. Um, this is a shot on the north side where some, some of the brush was cleared to increase the, the views uh, and, and remove brambles and blackberry bushes uh, so that when, as you walk through, it's a little more visible uh, around the lagoon. We also had to deal with the hazard tree removal uh, in the Nicomechel south of Portage Park. And this shot on the left, you see this was uh, taken about 20 plus years ago. There was a fire in that tree and it had, uh, the fire department put, put it out. And at the time, there was some work done on the tree to try and preserve it. But this is a shot on the right today where it's uh, rotted quite dramatically and we were concerned about that potentially coming down. So we topped the tree and here's a shot on the left where it's being topped. And the shot on the right is where it has been completely topped, but it still is there. It's an old Sitka spruce. And I understand it has some history. I haven't looked into great detail on that, but. Um, it is still there for people to, to look at. This is a shot of uh, a couple of the park benches, memorial benches at Sendal Gardens. And it kind of also enhances some of the improvements that have been made at Sendal. It shows the, the, the nice uh, gardens around the benches and some new, new pathways. This is the stairway that goes up to the top side of uh, Sendal. Another shot. And thank you very much. Well, thank you for that great information as always and staff doing a fantastic job as always. Uh, Councillor Martin. Thank you. <clears throat> I took a walk through Sendell Gardens a couple of weeks ago and it's such an improvement. It's, it's absolutely beautiful since the last time I was there. But what I did notice, Mr. Baumhoff, was um, more in the upper upper level uh, along the trails, the benches, the memorial benches that people have paid to have um, located there are really in a bad state. Um, I don't know what can be done, but you know, I kind of felt bad because they are memorial benches. People did pay to have them there. And, you know, there's moss growing on it and stuff like that. So does staff normally look at those kind of things and do something about it? Yeah, I think we, we do need to 
probably take a, a harder look at all of those memorial benches and um, ensure that they are either removed or uh, refurbished. Yeah. Um, there is a limit on the foundation of uh, 10 years. So when you make a donation, it's, uh, it, it would last for 10 years. So it, it, the option needs to be given back to the people if they wish to rededicate or, or have it removed. Some of the benches are in decent condition. All it needs to be is clean. But uh, I think we do need to do a thir more thorough job on assessing them all. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Pahal. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, and through you to Mr. Bomha. Uh, just a quick question on the Bryden Lagoon. There used to be directional signs there, and I think they're gone, or maybe someone removed them. Is that intended to be removed now, or are they just damaged? It is intended to be removed. Um, okay. Basically, you know, similar to many of the other trails in the city where we don't have that. We, we did it initially and we probably kept it in place for at least six or maybe even, you know, coming close to nine months. Uh, but we feel that it's time now that it, it's okay to remove them and people understand this social distancing and outside is a little safer and you just gotta watch when you're passing people and not get too close. Thank you. So as a follow-up then, I know we put up a lot of these corrugated signs and they're still sort of interspersed on um, our trailhead signs at the Dog Off Leash Park. And some of them have made their way into the Nickel Knuckle River and our rivers and other creeks. Is the city gonna be cleaning those up over the next year or so? Or is there, well, is there an action plan for that? <laughs> yeah, I'd have to, to think about that. I haven't had an action plan developed, but um, maybe it is time to remove them if they're ending up in the rivers, which we of course don't want. Um, and probably a similar kind of argument that people generally understand, you know, when they're outdoors, the, the distance requirements. So maybe it is time to have them removed. Uh, thank you for looking into that, Mr. Ramoff. And just a final positive note. Uh, I know the replacement of those bridges was well received by the community. And uh, thank you for adding the safety strips again on both of them and for removing those uh, ballards that was just creating a problem for people in wheelchairs real quick. So thank you. Thank you. Councillor Albrecht. Yeah, thank you. And um, yeah, thank you, Mr. Baumhoff. And, and I, I'm always just so impressed with uh, the work the staff does. So please pass along uh, my appreciation to staff for all their hard work. And uh, just a thought occurred to me when you were talking about the tripping hazards and, and improvements to our sidewalks. I'm just wondering um, uh, if there's any um, grants or cost sharing mechanisms with uh, the provincial government um, for uh, uh, you know, active transportation and walkability of communities. And if there's not, then I think that's something that uh, us as members of council should be uh, approaching uh, our MLAs about uh, getting some funding uh, to help uh, rebuild some of these um, types of infrastructure if, if they're truly um, serious about uh, climate action and reducing greenhouse gases and making things more walkable. Uh, then uh, those would be the types of projects that would be well worth the money uh, in order to uh, to help all of our communities with our aging infrastructure and um, improving um, the quality of life for residents. So um, maybe you can look into that and we can maybe figure out a plan or a strategy to try to get some additional funding. Thank you. Councillor Scarborough. Is that me? Thank you very much, and uh, Madam Mayor, and, and thank you, Mr. Baumhoff, uh, for your excellent report. Um, it is spring, and we've got a mild winter, and spring seems to have come early, and uh, you and your team are uh, demonstrating how busy you've been over this past season, and uh, you haven't uh, slowed down at all. Uh, I do appreciate the comments made previously by my council colleagues 
uh, kind of taken the wind out of my sails. But if I may, I would suggest that uh, um, uh, I'd really appreciate it if we could uh, look at, um, you know, clean the place up around some of the laneways and back alleys. There's a lot of people that are out walking and enjoying this good weather. And uh, especially around the uh, automotive areas and uh, the casino and the back alleys there, uh, if it's not too much trouble, uh, just so that, uh, you know, uh, we look, uh, you know, as nice as we can um, in the spring when people are out walking. So uh, thank you again for your report. And thank you, Madam Mayor, for uh, allowing me to make my comments. Okay, hey, Councillor Wallace. Thank you. Um to the mayor, to Mr. Baumhoff. Just to, just in, I wasn't gonna speak about it, but uh, just uh, in um, Councillor Sturdeboom's last comments in regards to cleanup, um, we have the opportunity as a community, it's pitch in week and, you know, phoning in and uh, maybe doing your part and volunteering and cleaning up. So just wanted to give a plug in for that again. Um, and just a, a, a compliment on um, Sendo Gardens. I know you showed that one photo of I mean, you showed a few photos, but the one of the rocks and, and the railing, and there's actually one on the other side going up into the, the higher part. And I just wanted to compliment um, the way it was done in fitting into the natural setting. So um, thank you for that. And so my request, um, I'll leave it, it is the end of my comments, is there are not enough garbage cans on the trails um, going all the way from 208 past 203rd, even further than 203rd, if you were to walk that trail, um, there are no garbage cans. I know that there used to be a garbage can. Um, you know, this is something uh, Councillor Pahal and I discussed on our walk yesterday. We didn't walk together, but we met and yeah, and he said that garbage can ended up being in the, in the, the river. So um, maybe, I don't know, when it comes to garbage cans, I don't think there's enough um, for a long stretch. So if, if that could be something looked at, thank you. There is, if I can just comment on that one, um, there is a challenge within the Nicomeco floodplain. We, to date, we have not put any garbage cans within the floodplain. And, you know, we put them, try to put them at the trailheads. So maybe that's what you're, you're noticing, uh, that they're not within the floodplain. Um, yeah, they're not on the trailheads. They're not in, even at the bridges, there's not even a garbage can when you get, like usually there's a garbage can. Okay, so you're saying not up, not enough at the trailheads either. At the trailheads, not not necessarily okay. the flood, like yeah. Thank okay. you, Mr. James. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, this is just a fun fact for you, Mr. Baumhoff. I have a cousin who has a daycare in Maple Ridge, and she consistently and willingly drives all the way to Langley City to bring her daycare kids to our parks because they are spectacular. I hope I don't get in trouble with Maple Ridge um, operations by saying this, because I'm sure they, they do a nice job as well. But you need to know that people outside of our community, um, even though I know it's not encouraged right now, are standing in line waiting to come to our parks. And that's because they are absolutely outstanding. So job very well done by you and your staff. Thank you. Councillor Paul. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. To, through you to Mr. Baumhoff again. Uh, Councillor James, uh, to poke my mind, we were on a walk and uh, there was an Evo car rental and there was two people in their hiking gear that got out and went to the trail system. And I know Evo is only available in Vancouver. So that just sort of um, firms up what Councillor James said about being a regional attraction, which is fantastic. And just to comment on what Councillor Wallace said. So there's the big steel bridge uh, that's right next to 203rd when you're going into Portage Park. There used to be a garbage can there. It wasn't bolted down. Uh, so I think some people threw it into the Nipple River. And I saw it floating there and it's no longer in the river. So I don't know what happened. That's like one of the examples where there used to be one there and it's gone. And I know again, like what Councillor Wallace was saying, if you're going on the other side of 200th Street towards Bride and Lagoon, there actually is a garbage can in the trail system right where there's the turnaround because it's the Metro Vancouver sewer main and there's like a truck turnaround before it veers off again. There is a garbage can there, but yeah, I think it's, it, yeah. yeah. So I think it's more like those existing garbage cans. Some of them have made their way into the water 
at probably by people putting them there. So they may need to be, you know, secured if they come back. <laughs> right. And so the, the steel bridge that you're referring to, is that the one just to the east of 203? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, any other comments or suggestions for Mr. Bonhoff? You got a whole new to-do list now, Mr. Bonhoff. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay, <good>. thank you. <laughs> okay, on to committee reports. Um, Crime Prevention Task Group Report Mailbox Retrofit, retrofit Project Incentive. And I believe Councillor Pahal is the chair of the task group. I think you wanted to speak to the report and put forward a recommendation. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. So I'm just going to read the motion. And then if it's supported by another member of council, I'll go into some further details that's not in the report. So that council directs staff to investigate an incentive program to retrofit insecure mailboxes in multifamily housing to increase security, and deter mail theft, which in turn reduces policing costs. So I'll look for a seconder. <laughs> Councillor Albrecht seconding it. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, so we did have a very robust discussion with the RCMP at our last crime prevention task group meeting. Mail theft is one of the things that spiked, uh, especially during the COVID times, but it was something that was increasing even before then. Uh, it leads to uh, other sorts of fraud, damage. All of this leads to increased policing costs. So when someone steals someone's mail, it's like the gateway to a whole host of other crime. The city currently has programs where if you're a member of crime-free multi-housing, you actually do get some discounts, I believe. And staff, please correct me if I'm wrong on your property tax. So we were just wanting staff to investigate the possibility of if a, you know, if there's some way where either maybe it's a, a small property tax break or it's a program such as, you know, used to subsidize replacing for low water toilets, while there may be some initial costs to the city, it will actually have a net decrease because you can actually measure uh, decreases in mail theft. So when you put in a secure mailbox, you do see a decrease. That means that our RCMP members aren't out there uh, investigating fraud cases as a result of that. So this is something where there is a measurable cost savings. So I'll just put that out there. Oh, and I should also do this. So one investigation uh, for, a, for fraud, as an example, it can take up to six months and 200 hours of police work just for one fraud investigation. So thank you, Madam Mayor. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Nobody said anything. Thanks, Councillor Bahal. Uh, Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I just want some clarification. Um, so are these the freestanding mailboxes that you're talking about? Because, I mean, a lot of them have their mailboxes inside the doors or in the lobby. Uh, if I may, Madam Mayor, for you to Councillor Martin. These are all of the old style mailboxes. So we're really looking at in apartments, some of them have those really flimsy ones when you walk into the lobby. We're also looking at some of the townhouses that are uh, probably 10 years ago, have them like on 201A in your neighborhood. They're there, but they're not really secured. It, we're not talking about the Canada Post community mailboxes, which are the new ones you'd see. Yeah, I guess, I mean, I guess staff can investigate this. I'm, I'm not sure that, I mean, I guess in my opinion, if I lived in a complex where my mail was getting stolen because of insecure boxes, I'd go to the, the property manager or the owner and ask them to do something about it. Um, and I would like, if we're going to get a report back from staff to know what the, um, the budget implications would be on something like this. So I'll support for staff to investigate, but I'm, I'm really not sure that this is something that we should be, be doing. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Stortipum. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Pahal, to you and your group for bringing this forward. 
I think that mail theft has been a very serious concern in our community. I know I've been victimized by it myself. Living in a multifamily residential building, I can tell you that our mailboxes were not secure, so I had my mail redirected for an extended period of time to another location outside of the city. However, now we've taken some initiative and we have secured these mailboxes more effectively. Uh, I'd still like to see additional security for them. So I like the idea of doing an audit for people to protect them um, from this uh, service. Although the mail delivery system is uh, changing dramatically um, and that uh, a lot of business is done uh, electronically, um, I think that uh, the initiative is uh, very worthwhile. Um, I do have a concern about how it would be implemented and what kind of cost might be associated, what kind of manpower could be expected. So I will support your resolution. Uh, with the caveat that uh, uh, I'm uh, concerned about the, the kind of cost. It may be that we can do this through a public relations campaign, but uh, we'll uh, have to flesh this out as a group. And uh, I, again, thank you for the initiative. I think the idea is very worthwhile and I'll support the resolution. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Any other comments for Councillor Bahal? See none. Um, I think it's a great initiative as well, but I would question why we wouldn't just push for full crime-free multi-housing or block watch in these, like the full program and just the mailboxes. Um, so is, is there a reason why just the mailboxes and not the entire buildings? Yeah, I can answer that, Madam Mayor. So crime-free multi-family is for rentals only and, those, and that only, as you know, and it only works for when it's like the one big property management. So that's something that we still support and our task group is fully engaged with. Uh, the other one, Block Watch, as well as a program that we try to support and we're trying to get our volunteers once COVID times are over to sort of you know work with the Block Watch uh, person at the RCMP to get that up and running. We had some discussions about how they're targeting the new multifamily in the Brighton area as well. Um, but we're really trying to hone in on some of these old places and the, specifically the mailboxes, just because it's such a, a marked increase. So beyond you know, the block watch program and looking out for your neighbors, it's like trying to get people to really like lock down those mailboxes. Uh, and I think that was our, our big focus because we keep on hearing that at the advisory design panel, every ADP, the RCMP bring up mailboxes. And then at our crime prevention, the RCMP brings that up every time they go over the stats with us. And they even reviewed the hotspot areas with us at the last meeting. So probably not surprising to most members of council, it's the areas that's bound by 201A, uh, 206, 53rd, and um, Douglas Crescent. So. Yeah, the only reason why I brought up the crime free multi-housing is with because of the theft of the mailboxes also goes with letting people in through that front door. Um, so no key, no entry. Those are things mm -hmm. that you should be looking at as well to go with um, mailboxes. So that's how people get in is people open the door. And so anyway, that would be my concern, but it's a great initiative. I'd like to see the full package though. Um, okay, call the vote. All those in favor, any opposed? That carries, wonderful. Okay, sorry folks, there's a lot of reading tonight. So I apologize in advance. So going on to bylaws, we have the Langley Lions Redevelopment Project at 20355, 50th Avenue, 54212 4th Street, bylaw 3134, Langley Lions Seniors District Housing Agreement. Final reading of a bylaw to enter into a housing agreement under section 483 of the Local Government Act. Motion is that the bylaw cited as Langley Lyons Seniors District Housing Agreement 2021, bylaw number 3134, be read a final time. So moved. Uh, okay, Councillor Martin, Councillor Wallace, um, any discussion on this? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. Oh, oh sorry, Councillor Albrecht, was that a, go ahead. Sorry, my mouse wasn't cooperating. So That's thank you okay, for recognizing that. And I just had a, a really, really quick question uh, for um, for staff. Uh, and it may not be uh, tied to the housing agreement, 
but I'm just wondering about, a, say, a dispute uh, mechanism or dispute resolution mechanism or uh, a rental protection or appeal process. So I'm just wondering where that would be as, as part of this whole, um, let's say, uh, concept of, of having uh, secure, a secure rental, a secure place for people, uh, and uh, hitting the uh, the target, um, um, let's say, um, revenue uh, levels uh, to uh, to qualify for housing in at the Lion Society. So I'm not sure where that fits. Thank you. Yep, not sure which staff would like to answer for clarification. Maybe Carl, Mr. Johansson. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, through the mayor to Councillor Albrecht. Uh, yes, of course, with the uh, the housing agreement, uh, there are provisions in there that do allow for that, and uh, we also have the Residential Tenancy uh, Act that provides uh, additional protection for uh, disputes. that answer your question, Councillor Albrecht? Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Johansson. Any other questions for staff? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor, any opposed, that carries. On to the next one, bylaw 3108, official community plan amendment bylaw, final reading of a bylaw to amend city of Langley official community plan bylaw 2005, number 2600, Langley Lions Housing, Motion is that bylaw cited as City of Langley Official Community Plan Bylaw 2005, number 2600, amendment number 10, 2019, number 3108 be read a final time. Move in a seconder, please. Councillor Storteboom, Councillor Martin, any discussion on that? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor, any opposed, that carries. Next bylaw 3110, discharge of land use contracts bylaw, final reading of a bylaw to authorize the discharge of land use contracts number 16-73 and 11-75 from the property located at 20355 54th Avenue. Motion that the city or the bylaw cited as discharge of land use contracts number 16-73 and number 11-75 Bylaw 2019, number 3110, be read a final time. Move her in a second, please. Councillor Sturdeboom, Councillor Albrecht, any discussion on that? See none, call the vote. All those in favor, any opposed, that carries. Number four, bylaw 3109, zoning amendment and development permit number 04-19. Final reading of a bylaw to rezone properties located at 20355 and 20385 54th Avenue, 5421204th Street to accommodate a 981 unit redevelopment of the Langley Lyons Seniors Housing Complex with phase 1A consisting of an eight story, 101 unit birch building replacement. Motion that the bylaw cited as zoning bylaw 1996 number 2100, amendment number 165, 2019, number 3109, be read a final time. And I need a mover and a seconder. Councillor Martin, Councillor Sturdeboom, any discussion on that? Councillor Sturdeboom, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is a very exciting uh, development, and uh, it is going to change the uh, area that uh, is uh, in that uh, neighborhood significantly over a period of time. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled by the, the social housing component that is being made available, and uh, by uh, working with uh, the government and the Langley Lions Housing Society uh, for this 981 unit redevelopment of the immediate area and starting with the uh, 101 unit birch building. Um, I, I do have a couple of questions and it may be that I've asked them before, but I would like uh, some confirmation uh, around the fact that uh, during the time of construction, uh, the neighbors uh, will uh, be assured that uh, uh, their operations won't be um, uh, impeded too terribly much. I'm especially concerned about the seniors residents uh, 
at uh, the Langley Lodge and uh, the disruption that might be associated with uh, uh, going over uh, the uh, right of way um, that uh, is shared with the uh, Langley Lodge Housing Society for the uh, um, um, that goes over the uh, Langley Lodge parking lot back there. Um, do you have a comment on that uh, for us there, Ms. Johansson? Uh, yes, uh, through the mayor to Councillor Stortaboom, as uh, part of the uh, building permit uh, review, there'll be a construction management plan uh, put forward. And uh, I also know that there's access to the site from the 203 uh, street as well. Uh, so I think the priority would be uh, from that uh, access point instead of going through uh, the stat right away in the Langley Lodge, although that is an option, but uh, we already have had discussions among staff about uh, ensuring that construction impacts are, are minimized as much as possible uh, to surrounding properties as, uh, as part of the construction of this, uh, uh, this first phase. Uh, thank you, Mr. Johansson. And uh, Madam Mayor, if I could, I just wanted to follow up on uh, something related to that uh, project and that uh, I want to confirm that uh, as each individual building is brought forward for consideration, uh, that council will be apprised and uh, that uh, there will be a process by which uh, the, the form and uh, appearance of these buildings uh, um, will be uh, acceptable to uh, the, uh, the city. And uh, uh, so moving forward, uh, although we are approving the Birch building, uh, we will be looking at approving the individual buildings as they are proposed. Uh, yes, through the mayor to Councillor Stortaboom. Uh, yes, the uh, the reason the OCP amendment uh, rezoning and land use contract uh, amendment or discharge bylaws that uh, council has approved are for the entire site uh, master plan, uh, if you will, and uh, the the development permit uh, for the Birch that's being considered is of course for the first phase, and the housing agreement is also for the first phase, and uh, going. Uh, uh, speaking further to uh, Councillor Albrecht's point before is that each of these phases um, will require a development permit to come forward for consideration uh, by Council as to go to the ADP design panel. Uh, so the, the next building up would be the Alder. And uh, that phase also requires its own housing agreement. And that's where the uh, you know the, the parameters in terms of uh, what percentage of uh, the seniors housing component is, you know, rent geared to income or deep subsidy or that sort of thing. And, you know, it's the agreement, the bylaw that will be registered on title for each of these uh, phases that basically sets out what the rents are, uh, who's able to live there and serves as a basis for ensuring that um, Lang Lions is maintaining their uh, obligations in terms of rent and, uh, of course, form of character. Thank you for uh, confirming and uh, clarifying uh, for me. Uh, I really appreciate that moving forward. Uh, I uh, hope to uh, be uh, more connected with the Langley Lions Housing Society and uh, uh, would appreciate it if uh, moving forward, we might even be able to have uh, someone uh, from council uh, on their board of directors. So uh, we'll uh, keep that in mind for the future. And thank you very much, Mr. Johansson, for you and uh, your team for all of your hard work. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for letting me speak. Albrecht. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, I just want to uh, really reinforce that um, a redevelopment uh, of this site is uh, is really exciting, and I think it's a really, really important uh, step in addressing the community needs and with the types of housing and the opportunities for people to uh, to live and continue to live in our community. So I think this is a really exciting project that has my full support. And I just want to make sure that we always have the, the right uh, checks and balances in place to ensure that uh, residents are protected, that there is opportunity for, for uh, them to be heard and, um, and to make sure that uh, a building is run properly, uh, cleanly, efficiently, effectively, and serves our community because uh, We've got a lot of housing challenges and uh, a project like this will go a long way to resolving them. So thank you very much. Great, thank you. Any other comments or questions for staff before I call it out? 
Thank you for answering that, Mr. Johansson. Appreciate it. Okay, so call the vote. All those in favor, any opposed? And that carries. And development permit application number 04-19, Langley Lions Redevelopment Project Birch Building Phase 1. Motion that development permit application DP04-19 to accommodate an eight-story, 101-unit first phase, phase 1A Birch Building Replacement be approved subject to the conditions outlined in the Deputy Director of Development Services September 4th, 2019 report. Um, is there an aside here on that? Councillor Sturdaboom, Councillor Pahal, any discussion or questions for staff? See none. All those in favor? Any opposed? Carries. Uh, next up, we have administrative reports. First one is West Country Inland Exchange Agreement 20222 56 Avenue and 20237 Michaud Crescent. Uh, that council approved the land exchange agreement between Penny Farthing Langley City Properties LTD and the City of Langley to provide driveway access area for proposed 213 unit apartment development on 20222 56 Avenue in return for an expanded public open space area at 20237 Michaud Crescent. Uh, uh, Councillor Pahal, I uh, need a seconder, please. Councillor Albrecht, wonderful. Any discussion or questions for staff on that? Okay, all those in favor, any opposed, that carries. Okay, on to number B, living wage policies. Um, I know there's four motions here. Do we all want to do them? Um, do you want to consider all four recommendations in one motion? Or does anybody want to pull one separately? I'll read them all as one motion, if that's okay with everyone. I don't see any objections to that. Okay. All right. So. Um, I'm going to read all four motions together. First one is that City Council adopt policy C-75 living wage policy for city employees and contract instructors. Two, that City Council adopt policy C-76 living wage policy for service providers and subcontractors. Three, that the effective date for the implementation of CO-75 living wage policy for employees and contract instructors be July 1st, 2021. And four, that the effective date for the implementation of CO-76 living wage policy for service providers and subcontractors be January 1st, 2021. So I need a mover and a seconder to that, Councillor Pahal. Councillor Wallace and discussion. Councillor Bahal, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I will be fully supporting these recommendations from staff and I'd like to applaud them for the quick turnaround on this because this was a presentation that came forward in mid-January and here we are voting on it. I think over the last year, there's been lots of talk about how we support essential workers and the whatnot. And so to be actually able to put this into practice and say, hey, if we value essential workers, people on the front line, they deserve to be paid a living wage and a fair wage. So I think this is an example of, I hope council putting, uh, you know, basically our words into action by declaring that we are a living wage employer and joining a hopefully growing list of other municipalities in BC that believe the same way. Uh, so I'm very happy that this is going forward and 100% supportive of this. And I think it shows that in Langley City, we value uh, our essential workers and we believe everyone deserves a living wage. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Pahal. I couldn't have said it better myself, so thank you. I will not repeat your words. <laughs> Councillor Martin. Thank you. Well, I'm a little confused by the, the phrase essential workers. Um, I'm, I'm not opposed to the city having a living wage. We basically have a living wage now, uh, except I think for one employee. 
uh, and it's going to cost us $139.07 uh, over a year to bring that person up to a living wage. I have no problem with that. Um, the other uh, increase is going to be to our garbage collection contract, which will be an increase of $16,000 a year. Uh, right on the backs of the taxpayers, because they're the ones that pay for the garbage contract. Um, maybe garbage uh, collectors are essential workers. I'm, I'm not sure, but um, I, I cannot support this motion in, in its entirety. Uh, I would not support uh, the contractor, the subcontractors, or the contractor uh, in well, the contract instructors are, are basically for our gym and stuff like that, I'm assuming. So uh, if, you know, if it's taken all together, I have to vote against it. No problem with the living wage for city employees and our contract instructors, but um, I don't think we should be looking at our taxpayers paying an extra $16,000 a year for, for their garbage pickup. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Is there anyone else? Councillor Stortham. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, I would concur with Councillor Martin as much as I think it's uh, a really good policy for the city to demonstrate leadership and establishing a living wage policy for our employees. Um, I don't think it's appropriate for us to tell somebody else how to run their business. I think it may be available for us to encourage our contractors to uh, recognize that uh, we are operating with a living wage policy, uh, but uh, that uh, and that we would like to have them follow suit, but uh, that it would be inappropriate for us to tell them how to run their business. So I will concur with Councillor Martin. Um, I, I think there's an option here for us to vote for that. And uh, I would like to see that brought forward. And I would support that, that just the city accept the living wage policy for ourselves. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I think Councillor, I'm going to go with Councillor Albrecht first. I'm sorry, I didn't see the hands actually. It's hard on Zoom. <sighs> Not going to lie. Uh, I'm okay either way, but uh, yeah, no, I, no, I understand uh, Councillor Martin and Councillor Sturdivant's uh, position. Um, I, I echo what uh, Councillor Pahal said, and uh, this is nothing new in the Lower Mainland. Uh, we've got uh, what uh, Victoria, New West, Port Coquitlam, Vancouver, Pitt Meadows, Burnaby, they've all, <laughs> excuse me, signed on to the program and, and see the value in in showing leadership in, in trying to uh, have people be able to live, pay the bills and, and make ends meet. So uh, I, I support this wholly and completely. So um, yeah, while I understand and appreciate it, uh, there's nothing to say that the garbage uh, supplier won't be bumping up their contract the next time around anyways. So uh, these are things that we just deal with. And I think it's really important to um, let's bring everybody along and, and try to have everybody making a decent, uh, a decent living and, and be able to uh, uh, make ends meet um, in tough times. And, and I think it's important that we try to get people to take a little bit out of their, out of their profits and put it back into the community. Thank you, Councillor James. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, I'm, um, struggle with this one as well. I don't disagree with the fact that the city is already, with the exception of, as Mark, our Councillor Martin indicated, one employee who is about 13 or 14 cents shy of being a minimum wage employee. I think the city's doing a remarkable job and I think we can continue to do uh, a remarkable job and follow this. But I, I too struggle with the idea of dictating to contractors what they should and should not pay. Um, I'd like to see this one pulled and voted on separately if possible, uh, reason being is, I'd like to see how the implementation goes and what that entails, and then maybe revisit this uh, down the road. Um, yeah, I just, it's, it's, it's just my thing. I just want to, I agree that the city should be, I would love to see this unilaterally across the board where 
we are able to put in our actual request for proposals for contractors that this is a requirement, but we don't actually know what that looks like. So I would like to see that one pulled and voted on separately. But other than that, I think this is a great idea for the city to start down that path. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Yes, thank you. Um, I guess, you know, I kind of take exception uh, that we should be doing this because the garbage contractor is going to raise their contract anyway uh, when it comes up. And yes, they probably will. But on top of the raise that they're going to do already, there's another $16,000 that they have to account for in wages. So it, it could be raised, uh, but it's going to be $16,000 plus uh, whatever their, their contract is. Uh, I like the idea that uh, Councillor Storaboom brought in that we could encourage our service providers and, and subcontractors to go with a living wage policy and see what happens. Uh, but again, uh, you know, the people that, that we really care about the most are our city employees. And they're all going to be earning a living wage. And we're all, it's going to cost us $139.07. So, uh, and I also agree with the statement that we shouldn't be telling people that run businesses how they should run their businesses and what they should pay their employees. If their employees aren't happy, I'm sure they'll find another job where they can get a living wage. But at the same time, it's not up to us to tell. Uh, so, and I agree that I know you asked uh, at the beginning uh, whether this motion should be separated, but I, I'm going to call for a separation now uh, and possibly make an amendment to uh, number four. Okay, there's, is there a seconder to her motion? Councillor Sturdivant? Okay, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I was seconding that motion, asking that these be separated out so that we could look at different options individually and vote on them separately. I see that staff brought forward some alternative recommendations and I would prefer to encourage that the city of Langley establish an internal policy to become a living wage employer for municipal employees only. Um, so uh, I would prefer that. Okay, well, we've already discussed it. So we'll call the vote on polling number four. Um, all those in favor of, I guess, what's the actual motion, Councillor Martin? You want it completely removed or do you want it changed? Well, what is first your motion? I, I did call, <clears throat> call for separation. So item one, two, and three would be voted on separately. And my amendment for number four would be um, maybe it's number two. Number two, that's that uh, city council encourage our service providers and subcontractors to comply with the living wage, with a living wage, and take out number four if that if number two passes. Okay, so. Uh, we have so just for a point of order and clarity, yeah. maybe we just that's do what the, I'm going to do the individual ones before we do the amendments. Otherwise, my brain is going to get confused. <laughs> I was going to say we can call the vote on the motion of pulling number four or. Yeah, OK, let's go with that first. OK. So all those in favor of pulling number four and the motion of Councillor Martin. I'm sorry, I'd like some clarification. Pulling number four, that means we're removing it from the table? That's what she asked for, is it not? Okay, well, that's fine. I just wasn't what sure. I, what I said was, if, if number two, my motion for num the amendment for number two would be that city council encourage our service providers and subcontractors to abide by the living wage policy. If that passes, then number four is redundant. It could be pulled after. Madam Mayor. If, if number two, if my amendment yes, is Kenny. Passed, then uh, number four is- We have is, a motion on the say. floor for all four recommendations. So if the movers and seconders would like to withdraw that and vote 
on each motion separately and make amendments or uh, whatever at that time, that'd probably be the cleanest way to do this. So could we just assume that um, we're all, each recommendation is up to be voted on separately and dealt with separately? That's not how the motion came forward though, was it? It was that four be removed. Um, actually- Was know, that not what it was voted on? You don't actually have to pass a motion to have a vote separated. That could be requested, but if the mover and seconder, Councillor Pahal and Councillor Wallace of the original motions um, to um, pass all four motions together, wish to withdraw that, we can start fresh. So I only need to deal with this separately. So, so if I think for clarity, like I, I'm going to support all four. It doesn't really matter to me if it's separated or not. So if I'm part of it, I'm happy to vote on each single one individually. I think that'll make it cleaner. Uh, so if I need to rescind anything so we can vote on each one separately, uh, I'm okay with that. Okay. And the motions would be put forward and at that time, Councillor Martin can put forward her proposed amendments to each one at, at that time. Did Councillor Pacall just say that he'd be happy to vote on all four of them at the same time? No, 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 individually. I said I will resend. Okay. Yeah, so you you're can do it. muffled, so I, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Sorry about that. And do we have to have confirmation from Councillor Wallace as well? Yes, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Yes, I'm with uh, Councillor Pahal. Okay, perfect. Okay. So we are going to go motion by motion. Um, number first motion that city council adopt policy CO-75 living wage policy for city employees and contract instructors. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Um, Councillor Pahal, Councillor Storteboom. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. Two, second motion. That City Council adopt policy CO-76 living wage policy for service providers and subcontractors. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Bahal, Councillor Wallace, any discussion on that? Councillor Martin, go ahead. Yes, I'd like to amend the motion to read that City Council encourage our subcontractors uh, and service providers to adopt a living wage policy themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, seconded by Councillor Storterboom. Any further discussion on that? Councillor Wallace? I, I just, it's hard to put the word encourage because there's no validity in just doing it, right? So when you say we're, when we adopt it, we're actually going to do it. But to, to go to somebody and say, we would really encourage you to do that, it still gives them the choice whether or not to. So, um, so I will not be voting for that. Okay, anybody else want to comment on the amendment to number two? Um, I'll comment. That's the idea, giving them a choice of selling us, telling them what to do. It's giving them the choice if they want to adopt a policy. If they don't, they don't. Instead okay. of us telling them what to do. Okay, I'm going to call the vote on the amendment. All those in favor of Councillor Martin's amendment. And opposed. So that's defeated. Okay, so I'll call the vote on the number two. All those in favor? Sorry, see my hand. Any, and opposed. So four in favor, three opposed, that carries. Number three, the effective date for the implementation of a CO-75 living wage policy for employees and contract instructors be July 1st, 2021. I need a mover and a seconder. Councillor Albrecht, Councillor Pahal, any discussion on that? See none, all those in favor, opposed, carries. And on to number four, that the effective date for the implementation of CO-76 living wage policy for service providers and subcontractors be January 1st, 2022. Need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Bahal, Councillor Albrecht, uh, any discussion? Councillor Martin? Yes, thank you. I'd like to ask staff, um, 
let's just say for in, interest uh, sake that our garbage collector does not go with the living wage policy, we would then not renew their, their contract and go with the contractor that does have a living wage policy? Um, through the mayor to Councilor Martin, what we would do is, um, as part of the contract, if there's a complaint from uh, a third party that the contractor is not abiding by the living way uh, policy, then we would do an audit and subject to the finding of the audit, the city may cancel their contract. Now, under the policy, we are not looking at um, changing the policy until they renegotiate our contract or we go for a new proposal or new bid. So at that time, we have to make it clear to them that uh, they have to abide by the living wage policy and we will clearly inform them that they have to meet that. And again, if we receive a complaint that they're not abiding by the living wage policy and we find that that's correct, then we have the options to uh, cancel or terminate their contract. Thank you. So would the complaint come from one of their staff or uh, I'm assuming? That's correct. So they don't, they could give us a contract, um, add $16,000 in there for the living wage policy and then not pay a living wage policy. They could do that. If they, we receive a complaint and we do an audit and we find that that's correct, then uh, we have the options to terminate the contract. Right, but it's only if they receive a complaint. If we receive a complaint, yes. And I guess the other problem I see is that um, if that happens and we do receive a complaint and we do con cancel their contract, um, especially garbage, then we cancel it and there's no garbage pickup until we find a new contractor that pays a living wage policy. <coughs> I can see this becoming a mess, but thank you for your um, answers, Mr. Chen. If, if I may, you know, normally in that scenarios, we would probably have a discussion with the contractor to see what steps or what measure they would put in to try to come up or comply with our, pol our policy. And if they decide not to comply with our policy, then obviously then we will have to consider the, the termination, but hopefully through discussion with the contractor and they will abide by our policy at that point, that time. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Councillor Sturdeboom and then Councillor Pahal. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. And thank you, Councillor Martin and James for your comments. I, I have some real concerns about where we're going with this. I think we could be in a position where we're opening up a whole new can of worms. And I guess my question for staff is that if uh, we have just a, a blanket complaint advising that all of our contractors uh, may or may not be in a position where they are paying a living wage, uh, is the city then responsible to audit all of our subcontractors and trades? Um, through your worship to Council Slaughter Boom, we would um, obviously be responsible with uh, the primary service provider. And it is then up to the primary service provider to ensure that their subcontractors are abiding by the living wage policy. So we would go through the primary contract to ensure that they are. Okay, thank you very much. Well, we're, we're going into uncharted waters. I can't help but wonder if it might be available for us to review this at some point in the future, because we might like to pull it back off the table. Is that? You, through the mayor to councillor sort of room. Yes, under the policy that this uh, policy would be reviewed on an annual basis with member of council to ensure that uh, it's still applicable. Uh, so there will be opportunity for council to reconsider on an annual basis. Thank you very much, and thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Bahal, and then Councillor James. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, just my thoughts on this are, we are not the first municipality or business to do this. Uh, it's been going on for many years now. Uh, we have seen that it's been a pretty smooth process. And if you just look into the details of our policy, our existing contracts are grandfathered in. Uh, so anything we do this year, anything that exists is going to be good. It starts in 2022, at the beginning of the year. So that's, I think, ample notice for anyone that's thinking of a contract. It won't come into effect until 2022. And there's a whole bunch of, um, I think, common sense exemptions here. 
So, you know, if this is a contract that's under $50,000, it's not subject to the living wage policy. If it's for emergency work, non-recurring work, if it's service performed uh, by a social enterprise, if it's someone who provides us just with supplies, if it's an amateur sports club, uh, really we're just talking about the largest contracts that we have in the city. So I think we have a fairly reasonable policy here. I'm glad that we can review it annually to make sure it still fits. But uh, I think just to be clear, this is not like um, every single person that, you know, does, uh, you know, we buy a $50 thing from home hardware. We don't need to prove that they're a living wage employer. This is for our large contracts and to show that there's, you know, we're, we meaningfully, meaningfully care uh, about a living wage for people that do significant business uh, with the city. We're not, you know, targeting the Langley Seniors uh, Society or any of our other small per providers or someone who happens to fix the HVAC because it's broken. So anyways, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor James. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So this has been a very interesting conversation and people's different takes on it. Um, I'm encouraged by the fact that this can be reviewed. Uh, to Councillor Pahal's point, what does concern me is that it's the large contractors that we're going to be holding the feet to the fire because I just think that monitoring something like this might be a bit of a hornet's nest or if we do get a complaint that the audit might be um, very time consuming for our staff. However, having said that and listening to everyone's opinions, the very fact that this can be reviewed every year, and I will be marking it in my calendar to ensure we do, and we can see at that time, um, yeah, actually the dates don't line up for the next election, so who knows, but um, yeah, making sure that this is something that can be reviewed January 1st, 2023, because if it turns out to be exactly that, which is a series of audits or even one fulsome audit or something that's too strenuous on staff to make sure that it's being uh, adhered to, then we can revisit it. But I see what the intent is here, and I see that, you know, in everyone's hearts, it comes down to being um, supportive of the living wage policy. So I'm going to support number four, based on the fact that we can review this in a year's time, once it's implemented. Thank you. Anyone else? I don't see anyone. Okay, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? And opposed to number four. Are you opposed, Councillor Storboom? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'm not comfortable with this. Right. I just want to make sure I couldn't see a hand definitely there. So uh, that passes with Councillor Martin and Councillor Storboom opposed. Okay, on to UBCM Asset Management Planning Program grant application that the City Council endorsed the UBCM Asset Management Planning Grant Application for Pavement Condition Assessment to that the overall grant management be provided by the City. I'm going to move around a seconder, please. Councillor Stortebaum, Councillor Wallace, any discussion on this? Okay, all those in favor? Any opposed? And just broke. Okay, award of tender uh, T2021-001, 200 Street Sanitary, 49th Avenue, Nickel River. There's two motions forward. First one is that council approves the award of tender T2021-001, 200 Street Sanitary, 49th Avenue, Nickel River to PW Trenchless Construction Incorporated including optional work based on the tendered amount of $821,213.11, excluding GST. And two, that council authorize the Director of Engineering, Parks and Environment and the Corporate Officer to execute the contract document for T2021-001, 200 Street Sanitary, 49th Avenue, Nicomaco River, to PW Trenchless Construction Incorporated. Move in a second, please. Councillor uh, Pahal, Councillor Storderboom, any discussion? See none, all those in favor? Any opposed, that carries. I need a drink. 
Okay, on to new and unfinished business. Ah, new motion, Federation of Canadian Municipalities election of the board of directors 2021 to 2022, Mayor Val Vandenbroek. Motion forward is where is the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, FCM represents the interest of member municipalities on policy and program matters that fall within federal jurisdiction. Whereas FCM's board of directors is comprised of elected municipal, municipal officials from all regions and sizes of communities to form a broad base of support and provide FCM with the united voice required to carry the municipal message to the federal government. And whereas FCM's virtual annual conference and trade show will be held June 1st to 4th, 2021, during which time the annual general meeting will be held and followed by the election of FCM's board of directors. Be it resolved that the Council of the City of Langley endorse Mayor Val Vandenberg to stand for election on FCM's board of directors for the period starting in June 2021 and ending June 2022 and be it resolved that council assumes all costs associated with Mayor Val Vandenberg's attending FCM boards of directors meetings. I need a seconder, please. Councillor Wallace, any discussion on this? And just so you know, there's no travel. Nobody's going anywhere, so. Uh, Councillor Martin. Thank you. Um, just to clarify, you ran for the board of directors last year and did not get elected. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, and, but you've been on a committee the past, since last year? Uh, two years ago. Yeah, pardon me? Two, two for, years now. Two years you've been on a committee. Yeah. Um, and you're right, there is no travel right now uh, because it's all by Zoom and I don't have a problem with that. Um, but two years you've, you've been involved in the FCM and not once have we ever heard a report back from, from the FCM. So um, I guess, you know, I don't have a problem with the first be it resolved, uh, but I think that we should look at the costs associated should the in-person meetings come back uh, at, at some point. Hopefully it'll be this year, but... Um, you know, it would be nice to to hear uh, a report once in a while of what's going on with the SCM. So I, I'll support uh, the first be it resolved uh, and see what happens. But um, the costs associated, I, I think that we deserve to to have uh, some kind of a report if it's going to cost our taxpayers money to to send you to these meetings. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Martin. I agree 100%. I'll give a report. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Um, like the library happenings or anything else. Um, I've asked for that before and to talk about communication and didn't get a reply. So I'm more than willing to put it on there. Um, I have no problem whatsoever. I never have. Councilor Albrecht. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And I'm not going to be supporting this. I, I have in the past. Uh, I think there's value to be having representation on on each and every one of these boards to uh, uh, to represent our community. Uh, but uh, I'm a little concerned, especially after uh, uh, last meeting's uh, endorsement of a letter and support of a position that was contrary to the city's position in our representation. So, um, yeah, I'm. I'm not so I'm going to call this. a point of order on that because that has nothing to do with being elected to the board of FCM. Sorry, it's just not. Does anybody else have any other comments? Councillor Wallace. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, it's uh, it's a lot of time to be on FCM. I was on FCM. There's a lot to read. There's meetings. It's very, very valuable. Um, at this time, um, we don't have anybody else putting their name forward to run as a director. Um, I was and I didn't again because of the time. So if we could just move forward with this motion, that would be great. So we can move on to the next thing. Absolutely. And I encourage everyone to join UBCM and SDM because I think it is really valuable. 
to what's going on. Anyway, okay, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? Okay, so that carries. Right, correspondence request support for BC to host the 2026 Commonwealth Games bid. Um, I believe there was a letter from David Black, uh, 2026 Commonwealth Games bid committee. So what did council wish to do with this? Councilor Storbrim, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, actually my package included a lot of correspondence from Mr. Black and I appreciate the initiative. I, I love the uh, opportunity to uh, bring attention to uh, sports in our communities and uh, get things going again and uh, encourage tourism. Um, but uh, there, there may be some implications that aren't entirely apparent to me. So I would appreciate uh, receiving this information and uh, asking staff for a report. Thank you, Council Sturdivant. Would it be better to maybe receive him as a council delegate or maybe ask him to attend to clarify the information before we send it to staff? Would everybody, okay. what do you, thank, what do you think you, about Sarah. that? I appreciate your, your input, but I, I would suggest that we've got plenty of correspondence identifying Mr. Black's position. I don't think there's a need to ask him to uh, attend. Uh, I okay. think we've got enough to work with us, what we have right now. Can I get a seconder? Um, Councillor Albrecht, second that. Uh, Councillor Pahal, sorry, I didn't see your hand there. Uh, no worries, uh, Madam Mayor, and, and through you, I think to Councillor well, actually, just to comment, maybe uh, I, I, I would be happy that if we just receive it for information or if we just support it. I don't know if we need to invest staff time in a report because I do think it's laid out. Um, so I will probably vote against the staff report, not because I don't support this, but just because I don't think we need more information. Uh, and I am on the fence one or the other if we you know, receive it for information or support it. Uh, I could go either way. So just so you um, understand, Councilor sort of if you support this initiative and the majority of council does, uh, I'm happy to support it as well. Okay. Uh, Councilor Wallace, go ahead. Thank you um, to Madam Mayor. I was going to ask maybe um, Councilor Albrecht or just as far as the tourism, because it talks a lot about tourism do dollars and, and the economy and, and you know, the pandemic we're in and how much it could be a plus in, in getting businesses back on, on their feet again. So that's why, I, you know, I, I am kind of in favor of just uh, voting it and moving it forward. So I don't know if at this time I could maybe, since Councillor Albrecht sits as a, a member of Council on Discover um, Langley, if, if he has heard of anything in regards to that. Uh, through the mayor to Councillor Wallace. Um, I can't say that we've heard anything specific on this, but it definitely would uh, do a, um, a huge favor to tourism business uh, for all of BC. And, uh, you know, I think it would be well received by uh, <laughs> just about every community um, in the in BC. Uh, it, it, the effects and the, uh, the trickle down and the domino effect could be uh, enormous. So uh, uh, I think this is probably a good thing. Councillor Wallace, go ahead. So can I make an can I make an can I make an motion just to um, approve this moving forward or in support of this? Um, so what was your motion, Councillor Storteboom? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I had asked that uh, we receive it for information and ask staff to report on it before deciding what to do with it. Or is that is that satisfactory, Councillor Wallace? Um, I just feel like that's more of staff time and there's more, there's other things that uh, staff time could be taken up on. Um, so I just, I, we've been given so much correspondence and there's been so much research done in, done on this already and they do have other municipalities supporting um, this, this initiative. So I would like to just, I mean, I know that we have a motion on the floor already, but um, you'd like to just receive it for information. I, I would like to move it forward. If, if, if I could, I would like to say as a council, we support this in moving forward. 
Okay, so we'd have to get staff to investigate first, um, or do we? Um, Ms. Kenny, does it really? Through, through the chair, um, Madam Mayor. Um, so right now what's on the floor, if uh, the seconder, mover and seconder wish to withdraw that, uh, we can go with the new motion or if uh, the two, the mover and seconder wish to go forward with this motion, it could be uh, voted on. And if it passes, uh, great. And if it doesn't pass, then consider um, Councillor Wallace's motion, but it's really up to council how they wish to do that. Okay. Uh, Councillor Martin. Thank you. It's my understanding that what they're asking us to do is to write a letter or phone the Premier in support of us, of BC hosting the Commonwealth Games. So I'm not sure what a staff report would bring. It's not going to cost us any money other than maybe a stamp, but the letter will probably go via email, so it won't cost us anything. So I, I don't think that, personally, I don't think we need the staff report. We either support, write a letter of support, or we receive it for information and let it go. I'm happy Perhaps, Councillor Stardabim, did you want to rescind your... Or did you still want to have staff investigate and call the vote on that? Well, thank you very much, Madam Mayor, and, and I appreciate the conversation. Um, I, I recognize that for the most part, it doesn't appear to be uh, very threatening. However, I, I see a lot of the moving parts of this particular proposal, and we're talking about uh, support for a fairly significant uh, initiative. Uh, it might even be available for us to uh, uh, maybe take advantage of the opportunity of hosting the Commonwealth Games and how that would play out for us. So I think before responding and uh, writing a letter to the Premier, uh, we should look at what it is that's being presented to us and how we can shape that so that it suits us entirely, rather than just getting on board the bus and going for a ride and hoping it works out that we end up where we want to go. So I'm not going to pull that motion. That's uh, okay. Albrecht is welcome to pull his second if he prefers, but I, I still think I, I'd like staff to have a look at this. I, uh, I don't think it's gonna be all that complicated to have a look at this and decide what the implications may be. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, was it Councillor Albrecht that seconded? Did you wanna? Yeah, uh, you know what? Um, just, just leave it on there, we'll vote it down and then we'll vote for the uh, uh, sending a letter of support. Okay. All right. Any other comments before I call the vote on Councillor Storterboom's amendment to have staff review? Um, all those in favor of Councillor Storterboom's, oh, sorry, Councillor James, did you? Thanks, Madam Mayor. Just a quick question for Mr. Chung, if I may, um, without putting anybody on the spot, I just want to know what the likelihood of this causing anything major if we write a letter of support for BC to host the Commonwealth Games? Is there any direct ramifications for Langley City at this point, or is it just a, a blanket? BC would love to have the Commonwealth Games. It doesn't uh, dictate where or anything. So do you see any negative connotations with doing something like this? Through the mayor to Councillor James, uh, I think right now, based on what I've read, is uh, pretty much a blanket. We're asking for a blanket support for hosting the Commonwealth Games in uh, BC, and um, that's how I read it. Okay, thank you. That answers my question. Great question. Um, okay, so let's call the vote on Councillor Storterboom's amendment to have staff investigate um, all those in favor. I'm good with the staff review, quite honestly. Um, opposed? Okay, so that gets voted down. So, sorry, Councillor Storterboom. Councillor Pahal. Uh, I'd just like to propose a motion that council directs staff to send a letter of support that British Columbia hosts the 2026 Commonwealth Games to Premier Horgan, the Minister of Tourism, Arts, Culture, and Sports, with a copy to David Black. And Councillor Wallace will second that, and we don't need a motion from her. So any further discussion? I don't think we probably need it. So I'll call the vote on that. All those in favor of Councillor Pahal's motion. Perfect, that carries.
Okay, on to new business. Uh, release of the closed report to council, Fraser Health Authority, Langley Health Contract Services to operate an overdose prevention site. Um, so are there any members of council that wanna comment on that, the report? Go ahead, uh, Councillor Bahal. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And I, I'm proud that we did put this report forward and we released it to the public. I think this is one of the critical pieces of the response to the opioid crisis. And I think it shows that Langley City is doing our part. I know um, it's, it's always an interesting discussion. We know, for example, that we cannot have a concentration of services in one specific area. So I think by what we did by saying it could be located along the Langley bypass and also understanding that walking and transit's really important and saying that it can be located basically west of 200th Street in an area where we know that there are locations that come up for lease. I think this is showing true leadership. We're acknowledging there's a problem and we're putting forward a, a solution. Uh, and it's in an area too where I believe that people will feel safe going to. There won't be the, the stigma of the like going to downtown Langley and being the person that's going into the storefront that's, you know, for the overdose crisis uh, response. It's going to be in an area where it's, you know, right next to ICBC or Triple O's or Boston Pizza. So I think by, by choosing that, we're, we're showing that we know this is a serious matter. And we're also making sure that we're distributing these critical services in our community. So we're not creating these clusters, which I know um, years of research says is dangerous. So I'm very proud of this and I'm very proud of this council. Thank you, Councillor Bahal for those kind words. Councillor Sturdivant. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, we are talking about healthcare, so please let me acknowledge our frontline workers and uh, emergency services personnel during this time of pandemic and the COVID crisis, uh, as well as the opioid crisis. Uh, it's a it's a really distressing time uh, to be in emergency services and frontline healthcare workers uh, are are experiencing a tremendous amount of stress. Uh, that being said, I'd like to compliment Council. Uh, for um, the discussion that we've had around this particular subject. I think that uh, it is a conversation that we need to have. We don't always agree on everything, but we do govern by consensus and I respect the democratic process. Uh, however, uh, I, I have to say that Fraser Health Authority will do whatever they want, whenever they want, however they want. There's no democracy in that. They've given us uh, answers to most of the questions that were asked um, they've dodged some of those uh, questions with uh, vague answers, and I, I, I'm really uncomfortable with Fraser Health Authority uh, taking the lead on this. I wish the City Council had more say um, with them that they would listen to, but that remains to be seen. At this point, I want to thank City Council for the conversation that we've had around this very serious subject. Each and every member has contributed. Unfortunately, however, it's not up to us. Fraser Health Authority are going to help themselves to whatever they want. And that's not very democratic, in my opinion. Thank you. Anybody else want to comment on the report? Councillor Wallace, go ahead. Thank you. And I could echo a lot of what um, Councillor Bahal was already, has already um, said. I, I want to commend this council for lengthy conversations and concerns, and we all know as a council that the opioid crisis is a crisis, and uh, our first responders are in crisis having to deal with this crisis, and coming up with a resolve is, is, is difficult, but these are human beings. We look at the numbers of you know, 1,400 dying in a pandemic, and we look at 1,800 di dying in an overdose crisis. So this is, you know, I, I just commend staff, I commend the amount of time this has taken, and it is a very sensitive, sensitive subject, and um, it is a crisis, and it needs to be, we need to be helping people. So just uh, want to just uh, thank um, my council colleagues um, with their work on this. Thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, well, we've got 
pushes us into the motion to hold a closed meeting. So that the council meeting immediately following this meeting be closed to the public as the subject matter being considered relates to items which comply with the following closed meeting criteria specified in section 90 of the community charter. One, a part of a council meeting may be closed to the public if the subject matter being considered relates to or is one or more of the following. C, re labor relations of other employee relations or other employee relations. E, ac the acquisition, disposition, or expropriation of land or improvements if the council considers that disclosure could reasonably be expected to harm the interests of the municipality. So I need a mover and a seconder, please. Uh, Councillor James, Councillor Storterboom, any discussion going into closed? Seeing none, all those in favor, any opposed? Okay, so now we have a motion that the meeting adjourn. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Storterboom, Councillor Wallace, all those in favor? Excellent, that carries. Kelly, you can shut off the recording.